Hey folks, how you doing? You remember John? Back again. Back again, we've got another adventure planned. I've alluded to this trip a couple of times in recent videos, saying that I had a bicycle trip planned. Well, John and I have been scheming over the winter months on a cross country, um, pretty much all off-road. It's a fairly arduous undertaking. It's going to take us a, a day or two to complete this journey. And we're going to take you along with us. I'm going to come forward a wee bit, folks, for the wind. It's, uh, it's pretty breezy. So we're cycling from pretty much the coast. The sea is just over there. Um, locative, to be more precise. So we've got a sea level start and then we're going all the way across country through some bonny glens and I'll keep the destination a secret for the time being. So I hope you enjoy this one folks, I hope you stick along for it. It's going to be a bit of fun, a bit of camping, a bit of cycling, a bit of pain I would guess here and there. No. <laughs> It'll be drier than last time. Yeah, it will do, yes, <laughs> for sure. So we've got a good weather forecast for the next uh, few days. However, unusually we're going from west to east to make use of the prevailing winds. But for the next three or four days, we've got a, an easterly or a southeasterly wind. So we're either going to have a headwind for most of it or a crosswind for part of it. Ah, okay. we'll be fine. So let's, uh, let's get these bikes on the road. My rucksack is open because I've got to put the camera in there. So um, I'll switch the camera off for now, folks, and I'll get back to you in a wee while. Enjoy the journey. And thanks for tuning in. And thanks for joining me, John. Again. Again. <laughs> Trying a new camera mount on the bicycle, folks. You can see the camera shaking around a fair bit. Let's see if there's any usable footage. So we've got a good track today folks, we've got a reasonable distance to cover, it's a good track but we have uh, one or two fairly brutal hills to get up and down and then tomorrow we have a, we have a super long day tomorrow, we've got a really really difficult day tomorrow in fact and we're going to try and do it in one day, we're doing a crossing up and over a BLAC and down the other side we're going to try and do it in a day, but if we can't, we've built in um, a little bit of flexibility to this trip, so if it needs two days, we'll give it two days.
another hill is not as bad as the last one it's a little bit more relaxed angle and it's a bit shorter that last one's quite brutal you think you're going down the side of a sea lock so it's going to be flat you people that don't like single wall or single skin tents in Scotland because of the condensation I'm a big fan they do need uh, ventilated but my little Terra Nova Southern Cross 1 also needs ventilated because it's so small and it uh, builds up a bit of condensation so condensation in these is more or less inevitable that's a beauty that's an absolute beauty I'm a, a big fan of Crux tents. They're not sponsoring this video or they don't sponsor me at all, but I used them when I worked in the Greater Ranges. And John saw my Crux geodesic on the last trip. So he's invested in this Crux times two shadow. X2 shadow. X2. Beauty. Well, it could be times two, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Two people. Two people, yeah. Two people. One for lots of kit. Yeah. <laughs> You see Ben Kruiken in behind us there, folks. With a bonny spot, Ben Starov there over your shoulder and then looking to the pointy peak on the end of the buckle. Can't remember the name of it down at the bottom of Glen Etive there. And then Biddy in with a bit of snow on it and Ben, uh, ben Trillican in there. I'm going to pop this in and then I'm going to dive in and lie down and see if I've got a comfy spot. I think that bit just over a bit will be a wee bit more level. Uh, 
I like my head to be higher than my feet. Try that. It's nice when you get calm conditions like this and you can take the time to get the tent set up just perfect. Usually you're rushing to get the tent put together before the next wave of wind or rain comes across so this is a, a real treat there we are i think i'm happy there john On the canoe trip when John and I crossed Rannoch Moor, Loch Ban, Loch, Loch Leiden, Leiden. He mocks my knots. I, I did mock John's knots. His, um, his bowline wasn't the same as my bowline. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the same as mine. That's, uh, so John has been practicing his knots. You see under the camera there, John, the folks can't see it, but there's oh, an yeah. old bit of uh, blue line there. Aye. I'll show you how to do a splice tonight. Alright then, I'll look forward to that, thanks. Yeah, it's not difficult. <laughs> right, anyway, what was I doing? I'm going to get my sleeping bag out and get it aired and get it lofted. That's the official terminology, is it? Get it lofted. Still got a wee bit of coffee left here. Right. Uh, I was talking to the camera, John, but uh, I'm saying I've still got a wee bit of coffee left. Well folks, I think I'm more or less set up here, so I'm going to go and scout about and see if I can get a bit of driftwood. I picked up a log on the, the track. John was laughing at me. I was. Oh, I picked up this wee, wee, wee log with a hole in it. Let me see if I can do anything with it later on, but it's... Um, it weighs about four or five times what it should for its size. It's pretty waterlogged. I'll put it there in the sun. Right, let's go and get some wood.
should ask. I've got a slab of ice. A wee while to defrost. I've got um, I've got real food tonight, folks. I've got chicken and vegetables, and I've got two frozen meals, John. Two of them. Uh, home cooked. One of them's got meat in it, so it's got to be used tonight. The other one's just uh, vegetable curry. So basically what I do with this uh, frozen chicken meal, folks, is uh, because it's got meat in it, I have to heat it really slowly and um, very thoroughly. The, the way that I stop it burning is I just put some water in and after a, a fairly, well, a short day, but a fairly hard day on the bike, to be honest, we had some big climbs. Uh, it's always good to, to hydrate anyway, so I make this a little bit uh, soupy. And I do indulge in the luxury of carrying two stoves, so when this is getting a little bit closer, I'll probably put the other stove on and make myself a drink so that I can have a drink with this as well. <laughs> This is the Howfit Narrican, folks. I've got uh, fond boyhood memories of dossing here, camping and staying. It's just an earth floor. I'll show you inside in a minute. John's having a wee coffee break over there. I was telling John that the uh, grassy bit outside uh, the body seems quite nice for a camp, but you've got to be very careful. The burn that runs down behind it 
comes very close to the track just in behind you there and if there's melt water coming off the hill in behind it can jump out of the the barn and it runs down in front of the bothy there and take your tent away there's a wee platform round there on the left that's a little bit higher it's a good camping spot an absolutely glorious place I gave you a wee glimpse of the woodland as we came through, there's still woodland in behind but I only put the camera on for a wee while this morning so what I'm going to do with the filming today, I'm going to put the camera on now and again to give you a flavour of the, the journey but we uh, simply have got too much distance to cover to film the whole thing but I hope that I capture enough of it that you, you get a good feel for where we are and what we're doing. So uh, that little woodland is a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest, an absolutely gorgeous little woodland. Anyway, let me uh, pop in and see what the body is like. So there we are folks, that's uh, the wee bothy. It's quite a basic place, just an earthen floor, got a fireplace, it's got a wee place for putting your kettle or roasting up some veggies and uh, a steak. It's uh, quite cool this, it's actually made out of uh, horseshoes. Quite nice. Now, I've stayed here once or twice. Shout out to Mo, Mo's not with us um, on, on this trip. She's, uh, she was working yesterday and she's got a few things to do this weekend. So, do you remember the nights that were spent in bothies with earthen floors, Mo? In Scotland and in China. I won't name them, folks. You'll have to figure out the Scottish bothies that have got an earthen floor. There's a few of them.
Well, John, we're going from a very rough track to no track at all for about uh, three, four hundred metres. Hopefully, there'll be a track after that. But we need to use this bridge to get across this uh, burn here, this river. This is a fine bridge, Dave. This is a fine bridge. Fine bridge. Uh, but we're going over there. It's just a pity there's no track. I don't want to go too high, John, because... Uh, I mean, this looks like people have trodden this. Yeah. If we stick by the river, we'll get to the site of the old bridge, and then we'll find the, the track again, for what it's worth. The track's not brilliant, but it's certainly better than this. Yep. I've been managing to cycle about maybe just a bit more than 50% of the, the old track. But uh, we're not going to cycle any of this. Well, folks, we've got, uh, can you see me there? You're on the handlebars again. We've got 10K of very, very challenging terrain. And in the middle of it, it seems like there's a section of about half a K where there's a new bridge being put in, but no track going to it or from it. But uh, I think there's just enough water in that river to make it difficult to cross. So we've decided to use this bridge rather than the uh, the bridge that's marked on the map, which I suspect has been washed out. But we might get up there and there might be a perfectly good bridge with a track going to it and from it, so... Well, if there is, Dave, I'll hold it against you for the rest of the day. Yeah. Well, you can either curse me or congratulate me, John, one or the other. Right. Um, but anyway, we have a, a few hundred metres of this pretty uh, unforgiving terrain, so let's crack on. hard on the body folks but it's also hard on the bike this uh, uh, cross-country work with the bikes heavily laden we've got to try and favor the bike a bit take care of it because we uh, we have a lot of kilometers to cover it would be quite hard if we have to carry broken bikes
Well folks, we're back on the track. Actually, uh, we could have probably skipped across that. But that's only part of the river. The big river is in behind and the bridge is definitely washed out, so. And let me have a look at this map. We're probably about two kilometers from the watershed, John. Good. And then it doesn't, uh, the track doesn't get any better, but the direction of travel gets better. We start going downhill for a wee while, so. So let's uh, walk and cycle on, and then we'll have a cup of coffee, I think, in uh, maybe 20 minutes. That sounds good. But what uh, countryside, absolutely glorious. Thumbs up to the countryside. don't know if you can see that folks over in there the line of the track and I think the watershed is over there so we're making progress what do you think John kilometer kilometer and a half to that watershed I don't think I can make it without without a, a wee sustenance break I think we might cross this bit and get onto the track and then have a sip of my coffee. Well folks, this is proper hard work. So there's been a lot of more what I would call domestic type videos on the channel recently and there's a reason for that. Doing things like this, well, you simply, you can't do this every week. Well, not my age anyway. And uh, sorting out all the logistics of it, we're only able to do this because uh, John's wife, Lara, very kindly agreed to spend a day taking us to the start point. How are you doing there, John? time for a cup of coffee soon. Well there's a pile of stones up here and it may be marking the high point, I'm not sure, but we're going to stop at that pile of stones anyway and uh, I'm going to break out a PBJ, PB, PB, I can't speak folks, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a PBJ and uh, have some coffee, get some energy for the next part because although we can't be too far away from the the high point. Uh, this track is uh, unforgiving so even the descent we're going to have to hike a lot of the descent but eventually we do pick up another Land Rover track so so it's a big shift today. Let's keep going let's check out this pile of stones it's it's only about uh, 300 meters away maybe even less than that however it's uh, considerably higher than we are now so it's going to take a wee bit of energy to get there. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich waiting for me when I get there. Let's go.
Well, folks, we didn't quite make it to the watershed, but I think it's not far away now. I think it's just up above the bikes, to be honest, but I'm not totally sure about that. Anyway, I feel that we're about six kilometres into the 10 or 11 kilometres of really tough terrain, so we're over halfway and we'll have gravity on our side hopefully in about 10 or 15 minutes time. Anyhow, much as I would like to lie here all afternoon listening to the sound of the stream burbling away, I think we have to get these bikes loaded up get on with it. and get on with it. And you see John in the distance there, he's coming. I went on in front a little bit to see if this was the high point, but let me spin you around, folks. This glorious countryside. At least I can cycle this bit of the track, but you see that sweep there coming down? I think the high point is going to be there not this bit here but further back still out of sight so when I get over that little lump in front of us there I think we'll see some more high ground so it's definitely uh, a lot of hard work today my 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 This isn't particularly the crux of the trip. This is probably the hardest crossing of high ground because of the state of the track. But we, um, we have another bit of very high ground to cross as well. Don't know if you can hear any of this folks with the, the wind. We very unusually for this pass and this time of the year, we are going into a headwind and we will be for the whole trip in fact and that is west over there and that's east so we have an easterly wind if we had the prevailing wind it would be helping us but the, that um, easterly wind was quite hard work this morning John it was um, in the early morning when the air was still cold the wind was pretty strong so coming up the lower part of the glen this is Glen Kinglass, I've mentioned that a couple of times, I think. Coming up the lower part of the glen, which was relatively flat, it was, uh, we were in um, her climbing gear, gears on the bike, not clothing. I haven't been filming much of the cycling bits, folks. It's too bumpy to have the camera running when it's on the front of the bike and we just simply have too much distance to cover to be putting the tripod up and doing the, the usual kind of cycle through so forgive me for that but every time we've stopped or had an opportunity we have um, done a wee piece of camera and I've handheld a few times so Anyhow, I've got a water splash here. I'm just going to climb off the bike and push past it.
I can see a long way ahead now and I think I'm right enough in my assertion that that ridge that I pointed to is the high point which is quite a long way on might even be a kilometer anyway it's flattened out so I can cycle for a while Lock Docker, folks. And as you can see, we've got some wonderful downhill now. John's away. I seem to have lost John, I think I better walk back. Hope he's not come off his bike. I'm gonna hike back and see see where he is. See him away up there. Well, folks, first breakdown of the trip. John's got a puncture, but um, he had a spare tyre and tube, so he's running tubeless. So just cleaned all the muck out and uh, gone old school, put a tube in and a tyre. I guess you know where I am on that. I'm not very keen on tubeless when I'm in the back country here, but he's done a lot of cycling off road in all sorts of places and it's the first time it's happened so and he was well prepared for it so no problems yeah and, how'd you do so, he took over what a place i'm quite good at um i'm quite good at fixing punctures with a collection of vintage bikes i'm forever um repairing tubes and tires and i some of my vintage bikes i actually run vintage tubes on them i've got some world war ii tubes and they're super thin so they puncture really easily so so it's a bonny spot to break down though you did it properly john you picked the right spot and it's not raining yep. This is a new pump I bought, uh, folks. If you saw the video I made oh, way back uh, during, in between some of these dreadful lockdowns, I did a cross-country trip, a solo trip, and I got a puncture. 
uh, which required uh, taking the wheel and everything off. Anyway, when I put it back together, I had a tiny little pump to fill a fat bike tyre and I was heading on to a, a slightly better track, so I wanted to take it up to about two bar. I was there pumping away like that for goodness knows how long. So, let me put this back on my bike. Well folks, I should have the other camera on to show you what I'm doing here. I'm hopping from rock to rock with my bike in the river. And the bottom is too slippy and bouldery to cycle through. The water's too deep. Let's see if I can get across here. Ah. Oh, oh, got a big step here. My bags are just out of the water and no more folks. Stopping for a wee breather. Let me see if I can change that camera angle a little bit for you. Can you see what I'm up to here? Hopping from rock to rock with my bike in the river. You've got John. With my big fat tires, my bike is trying to flow the way. <laughs> well, now this is interesting. Got a jump here with a bike, fully laden. Oh, and we made it. You can see what we've been doing. Big jump, John. No thanks. And we're over. And there we are. That's what we crossed, folks. Can you spot the deer, folks? I'm just filming GoPro. With that breakdown, we lost a bit of time, so the cameras have been away for a while, but I don't want to dig out the big camera. You might just be able to see the deer, some young stags grazing across the other side of the river there. And there's John down the track. And as you can see, we have a decent uh, track now. So that's uh, Ben Ado in front of you there to, on the left and uh, Ben Doreen on the on the right. Come on John, you can do it. It's gonna take a run at it. It doesn't want to go too fast, it's quite slippy. It's slow and steady, it's not deep.
Well done, sir. That's uh, Ben Vanek, folks. Let me adjust the, the muffler covering the lens, I think. Ben Vanek, the twin topped hill that you can see from the Och on the, the road, which is away a distance behind you there. So we've made some good progress. We're a bit running a bit behind schedule though, so I haven't been doing as much filming as I might have done. So apologies for that, folks. I'm going to get the tent up here and then I've got a vegetable curry that uh, will hit the spot tonight. We've burned a few calories today. We've got very little daylight left, folks, so we need to get our tents uh, set up quite quickly. We'll be cooking in the dark tonight. literally camping at the side of the track. The ground is so wet, it's quite difficult to find a spot to camp. Found a nice wee elevated ledge just back there. I can see it, but uh, it was pretty windy up there. So we're down out the wind here. So this is raised up a wee bit. So it's a little bit drier, but I'll put my ground sheet down tonight under the tent. I don't mind cooking in the dark, folks, but it's uh, not so much fun establishing a camp in the dark. Good chance that you might lose something. So, we've just made it. This uh, mat blown up, my sleeping bag unfurled. Well, folks, I've been busy. I managed to get my vegetable curry cooked up before darkness. Let me have some fruit juice to help it down, and I'll get the kettle on afterwards. That GoPro is almost out of power. So I might be sitting here talking to myself. All right, so tonight, folks, we've got a bit of pasta. Prince's chicken curry. What have you got, John? A special ingredient, pasta. Prince's chicken curry, not just any Tesco's curry here. All right. And a bit of salt and some chili flakes. Sounds so, good. And then for pudding, yeah. fruit cocktail. Oh, 
Excuse me, sneezing on camera. Through cocktail, that sounds good. It's posh, isn't it? Yeah, very All posh. I need now is some evaporated milk, and I'll be back being eight year olds. Eight year olds. There's a <laughs> shop about 40 miles that way. Ah, oh, I'll go with that tonight. There's another shop about 40 miles that way as well. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere, folks. That's Ben Vanek. I think I've said that about three times already. We're heading to Glen Lyon in the morning and uh, we'll have a decent track. Once we get to Glen Lyon, we're on a decent track um, pretty much all the way until we get to Kirk Road, which is not so decent. No. And it's quite... Well, is that, it's like that to start with. Yeah, and then it's and, like and that. Then it's like, yeah. and then it's a nice forest track downhill. Yeah, once That's we get scary. over the top. Mo and I climbed the Graham, just, we went up to the high point on the Kirk Road um, uh, just a few weeks ago, so you're going to see another bit of it, but it was a misty, murky, snowy, rainy day when Mo and I were up there. It's going to be a nice day tomorrow. Anyhow, we'll see if that camera's still got any power on. I switched it on, it was down to 4%. We might be chatting to ourselves, John. No red flashing light. Morning folks, it's a cold one this morning, well layered up this morning. Below freezing in the night, I think it's barely above freezing now. Get some porridge on the go, that'll heat me up. taking the tent down while I'm making my breakfast but I'm going to leave it up, I'm going to sit inside in shelter while I have my breakfast. It's a little bit cold to be sitting outside. I think I'm a wee bit ahead of John anyway so it only takes a minute or two to take it down. I've got the usual breakfast on the go folks, porridge. I think I'm going to have tea this morning and I've still got some It's a beautiful day though folks, it's uh, bitterly cold in the wind just now, we've had an east wind the whole trip and we're going east again today, we've got a big big distance to cover today but unlike yesterday we've got good uh, tracks and um, we've got a little bit of road section as well in Glen Lyon so, so basically what we're doing here is we're going down underneath Ben Vanek until we get to the end of uh, Loch Lyon and we find the, the track I think uh, We'll probably go on the north side of Loch Lyon all the way down until we get to the end at uh, the wee hamlet of Pubo and then uh, from there we, uh, we pick up the single track road. We'll go down there, the single track road, uh, all the way to Bridge of Balgi and then just beyond and then um, there's a track that goes up and over. So the plan is um, at least to get the Glen Lyon bit done today but uh, I think John and I would both like to uh, finish the trip today if that's possible. However, it is a long way to go because right at the end of um, the Glen Lyon cycle, we've got to go up and over Kirk Road and it goes up to 500 and something meters. It's a, it's a big climb anyway, and then uh, drop down the other side. Going down the other side's not too bad. And then uh, my car is parked at Kinloch Granach, so it's not actually that far away. If I can make it to the top of the Kirk Road, I know that um, I've got it in the bag. However, um, the Kirk Road getting up to the top is a, a fair challenge at the end of a long day and yesterday was a particularly gruelling day. So, But I'm um, really enjoying this trip. I, I, I just love the physical challenge. I like the, um, the thought in the morning of setting off knowing that you've got a hard day ahead and not knowing um, whether you're going to 
reach your kind of rough destination and in fact we stopped a bit short I was hoping to get to the the, the, the head of um, or this end of Loch Lyon last night but we just ran out of daylight with that uh, breakdown and uh, we had a choice of paths at one point and I'd been down the, the path that we chose um, oh, a number of years ago, not actually that long ago, maybe about uh, 10 years ago, something like that. And I remember it being quite a good path anyway. It's uh, dreadfully washed out and eroded now and we pushed the bikes uh, probably the, the better part of three kilometers. So it was a long way. With hindsight, it might have been better to go into the, the woods and uh, take the longer track. We did actually venture into the woods to have a wee look, um, but the first part was knee deep in um, liquid mud. Uh, anyhow, I think it was probably just the first part, and I think if we had persevered with it and got round, we might have got a better track. But whatever, um, we got here in the end, and uh, as I say, we lost a bit of time, so it meant that we've stopped short of our destination of yesterday, but absolutely love that only really an adventure when um, your best laid plans don't come to fruition and you have to start adjusting. Anyway, I think my porridge is ready so I'm going to chomp my way through my porridge, have a cup of tea and then I'll put the, the stove back on and heat some water so that I have a drink uh, on the bike for later on. I'll turn the camera off for a wee while. So I think as the saying goes, morning campers morning Dave. Um, yes you too could be lucky enough to be picked as a subscriber to a company Dave um, on his trips. Bit of a hard day yesterday, um, not least because of uh, my puncture which on the one hand I was cross about but on the other hand amazingly brilliant provision by myself of a spare tyre even. Uh, not that we needed it didn't think but just to be on the safe side we chased the tyre and stuck a tube in. And then that path that Dave mentioned was um, not great, is probably the best and politest way to say it. And the push up uh, the Glen, that was, uh, that was quite a push as well for me, um, quite a challenge. But here we are and uh, almost, almost in Glen line, we just need to break camp and get ourselves away.
Still, still got dry feet, John. I've got uh, waterproof socks on, then. Ah, good man. I didn't bother putting mine on. They're in the bag, so I've got to try and do this without getting wet feet. So far, so good. Well, folks, I've managed it without getting my feet wet. I've got longer legs than John. Well, John, this is so much easier than yesterday. So far. So far. And, uh, the wind has died for a while, so I think that it's supposed to be less wind today. That wind was brutal yesterday morning. Cycle it. I think it'll be okay. I'll probably go to the the uh, right where it's a bit shallower. Yes, it is. Might be a foot down in the river, but let's see. I tell you what, I'll go first, John, and then um... what's that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, John's going for a paddle. I cycled across. Not too bad, but the the stones in the bottom are they're absolutely treacherous, aren't they, John? There's more of me to hurt when I fall off, Dave, than you. Taking any chances on these. Last thing broken We're supposed to be going down into Glen Lyon, John. This uh, is beginning to feel like uphill again. Well folks, we can see the Glen Lion Hills now and the watershed is that low U-shaped ridge ahead of us so we're going to get up and over that and then after that we get uh, some downhill to Loch Lion and then we contour Loch Lion which is mostly flat but with a real sting in the tail at the end, a big climb at the end But we're uh, making progress, getting there. It's good to get this climb done at the beginning of the day. That's Loch Lyon in the distance there, folks. So we've got a bit of downhill now. We've officially crossed the watershed. So we can Enjoy a wee burrow down this track. John's doing a bit of gear adjustment there, cinching things down a bit tighter. It's a better track today, but it still rattles about a bit. Let me go in a bit closer and I'll show you the hills, folks. This is lazy filming, just leaving the GoPro on the, on the bike. So, in behind John, you can see a call. To the left of it is Ben Derain, which is uh, looks a bit strange from this angle because everybody knows it as a totally conical peak, but we are looking at it from the east, and then around that way a little bit we have Benado. So two of the Bridge of Orkey Munros.
And then behind me in the cloud, we're beginning to see the Glen Lyon Hills. Loch Lyon, folks, we're making good progress today. So we've got to cycle the full length of the loch with all its undulations and a couple of river crossings. But like I say, the sting in the tail is getting up a brutal little hill at the end. Ah, it's relatively short. And once we get up, we've got a nice downhill stretch and then uh, we hit a single track road. Get your perch on the handlebars there, folks. They're a little bit close, but I've tried various handlebar mounts for the bike to hold the GoPro. And oh, I've got a water crossing here. Oh, there we are. Um, and none of them are very good. On the last bicycle trip that John and I did, two of the mounts that I had rigged actually failed, they cracked. This one is not perfect because it's too close in, but it seems to be the strongest. A wash out on the track here, folks. And we have a river crossing just ahead. What is it looking like? Well, it's looking quite deep. Well, folks, we've got a bigger river crossing this time. But I threw a handful of uh, rubble sacks into my bag, into my bike bag there. So I sold a couple to John. You I sold with them for 10 pounds each? 10 pounds each, a left and a right, size 12. So I'm just going to put mine on and see if I can find something to tie them up with. And then we'll wade this river. Keep our boots dry. So it's not rocket science, this folks. Just shake it out. Put it on and then an old boot lace here.
good time of races up like a set of gilly brogues. Just go for a simple overhand. This is a brutal climb folks, but I'm going to save my drivetrain and push for a wee while with all this weight on the bike. And a real chance of snapping the chain. laid back a little I can actually cycle quite easily now but just gonna enjoy a wee walk John's a bit behind me I'll catch up a wee bit excuse my runny nose folks it's pretty cold that wind a combination of hard hot work and a cold wind give me the sniffles down this road a little bit, find a spot for lunch. My last peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Getting a little bit stale now but it'll, I'm sure it'll taste just grand. Some hot coffee. Right, I think I'm officially at the high point so pretty much all downhill for a while anyway. John's not too far away. I hope you can hear me folks, it's pretty windy in the glen. I've stopped here to show my Canadian friends the cairn which commemorates the life of Robert Campbell who was born here in Glen Lyon. He worked for the Hudson Bay Company as a pioneer explorer. One of the many Scots explorers. So a wee shout out to my Canadian friends, especially to Karen in Nova Scotia. I know you follow the channel carefully, so I hope you like this one, Karen. Let me show you a wee glimpse down the glen. The camera's still on the, the bike, so bear with me for a moment. We're heading east, folks. And this glen eventually drains into the sea on the east side of the eastern seaboard of Scotland. But we're still climbing. We've got quite a big climb ahead of us now on this road. Let's take it slowly. At least we've got a decent surface.
Scots Pines are bonny. So we're on to Kirk Road now folks. This is the last leg of the journey but we have to climb to 500 meters on this track and then we drop down steeply into the trees in John's home territory down to Loch Rannoch. So we're still cycling at this point but we'll be walking soon enough once we get up here the track bends to the right and there's a little steep bit <laughs> it's not little John says Oh, it's hard work folks, and it's quite warm today but we're in this little cleft in the glen out of the wind so the wind coming down Glen Lyon was quite hard so we're going straight into it all the way down Taking the bike for a walk folks, you got the sun in your eyes there, see if I can shield it a bit for you, I've got a crick in my neck doing this, Gotta keep the sun out of the lens, hey, quite brutal, there you are folks, you can have a look at John instead of me, you probably just see my arm, If we'd wanted to film all of this trip to give you a real flavour for it all we really needed to do it over four or five days but like I was saying to John I like the physical challenge now and again not every day or every week but two or three times a year it's good to have a, a real challenge so we're trying to cover this massive distance in three days and uh, it's a big undertaking which means that we can't stop to set the camera up at the side of the track or in the hill country we're just filming GoPro on the handlebars which I'm very aware is not brilliant footage but um, I do want to share this with you and it's one of the adventure videos for this year as was the last trip with John in the canoe but it's also nice to set myself a bit of a challenge and kind of crack on with it and, and not be toing and froing too much to collect cameras. We wanted to film a bit more last night around camp and have a bit of a blether but our breakdown and one section of track that I remember being quite good was particularly bad so we lost a little bit of time. Anyhow I hope you appreciate this one anyway folks it's uh, quite hard work. I notice we've got a few squeaks and creaks and groans they've had a hard few days is that your knees, John? I think it might be my hips. You get some uh, WD-40 on, on the joints. Uh, the bikes are uh, they're running well, so they've not got far to go now. I think we're possibly down to single figures now, John. Maybe about 
nine kilometers away from my car and your home although we still have uh, we still got a bit of work to do some trees and some heather well folks the hardest part of the trip is definitely behind us now it's pretty much all downhill now and the track gets better although there's a wee bump for you there the track does actually get better in a wee while miles on the road back along to John's place where my car is parked so I really hope you enjoyed this one quite entertaining for John and I we had uh, a really big day yesterday yes. uh, today is quite a big day but it's uh, it's worked out well uh, we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule so I'm gonna get this uh, bike stripped down through all the dirty gear in the back of the car Put the bike on the carrier and away down the road. So thanks as ever folks for tuning in. It's very much appreciated. John, do you want to say anything to the folks? If you ask to come on a cycle ride, make sure it's four or five days. It's a bit longer for a bit easier on the legs. Yeah, this trip, uh, in all honesty, this trip should have been spread over four or even five days. Five days would have been comfortable, but I'd said earlier, I've had a, a little bit of camera problem, so I'm going to say this again, so I might be repeating myself, um, that I quite enjoy a physical challenge every now and again. I don't like to do this sort of stuff every time I go out, but this was a real challenge covering uh, this distance. We've gone from the west coast of Scotland into the hinterland, almost into the middle of uh, the country, going up, 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 and we dropped down a little bit now, but of course they yeah, crossed a couple of fairly high points and it would have been a lot easier to spread it over five days especially with the filming and stuff like that that's part of the reason why a lot of the film filming has been done from the bike rather than stopping like this and setting up the tripod and so on so so you're right John yes but it was great yeah it's absolutely amazing good company we've had amazing weather we had good fare we ate well we slept well so to Nothing to complain about. So. so take care folks and I look forward to getting back to you on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>